Hey everybody, my name is Lee Frazier. I'm a Maya Technical Specialist for Autodesk and I've been having, again, a lot of fun with the MASH tools. And I wanted to go over a, an example I've been playing around with and one that we used in the Imagine Design Create Tour over the last couple of stops. And it just shows the capability of MASH and the motion graphic tools inside of Maya to go from something that's very chaotic and abstract and organize the motion that of the, whatever object it is you're trying to animate. And so in this case, we're going to start off with a simple plane. Uh, we're going to use just a standard MASH network. We get that distribution of 10 objects. You can see we can increase and decrease that. And we're, in this case, I'm going to take that distance and tie that down to zero. So we're all, all these planes are sitting on top of each other. And to add the chaotic sort of motion, I'm just going to take a signal node and I'm going to set this to trigonometry and basically we get that sort of motion that kind of bounces things around based on a sine cosine. I'm going to take that time scale down a little bit and play around so that they, they look like they're a little bit uh, separated. That works pretty well for me. At any time I can go back and increase the number of nodes that uh, I have in here. We also can increase the separation if we want, but for now I'm just going to leave it like that. And from here I want them, let's actually let's expand them out just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So what I want to do is take these and have them animate down a curve and go from this sort of chaotic motion to something that is static and organized. So I'm going to start off by using a curve. I've just got a curve hidden here. And MASH, uh, the motion graphics tools inside of Maya, have a great way of controlling these objects or sending them down, a, a, in this case, a motion path or a curve. And I'll just add that curve node. And now I get this curve slot that I can just take my curve, middle mouse button, and drag and drop it from the outliner into that curve input. So now as I scrub through the timeline, you can see these guys sort of send themselves down that line. It's a little bit of a, a slow animation, so let's increase the speed. And I'm going to have these stop at the very end. So once they, they reach their destination, they're just going to stop regardless of the timeline. So that, uh, that works pretty well for me. So now what I want to do uh, is add their target. And so I've got a big piece of geometry here that uh, will act as their target. But the problem is I need a another MASH network to act as that target. Now in the past, we've handled this with uh, goal objects and particles and things. This makes it much easier to do. So I'm just going to take my target piece of geometry and unhide that. And you can see it's just another plane. It doesn't matter what it is. In this case, again, we're just going to create a MASH network just like we did before. And you can see I'll just rename that target. And if I go to my uh, distribution section, all I have to do is scroll down and drag and drop this star into the input mesh and set this to face center. Now, the reason I did that is because it exposes this flood mesh. And you can see that just like that, I get my, I'm going to hide the original geometry. You can see that I get a distribution of points that corresponds to all the face centers of that geometry. So if another thing that I want to know is how many points make up this network. And I can go into my target. Uh, which is what I renamed that network, and see that I've got 5,950 points. And if I go to my first MASH network, you can see I've only got 31. So I want to go ahead and change that. And that gives me a whole bunch of points that uh, I didn't have before, which is great. This is a dynamic value we that we can increase and decrease. And I'll just undo that back to my node or my points there. And I can change this distance uh, linearly, or I can go in and even add something like a random node to this. And I think I want to add a little bit of rotation to all these values. So then they look a little bit more scattered and sort of uh, kind of like a mass. I kind of like that. And we can even spread those out a little bit more. Now you can see they sort of look a little bit more swarmish. We could go a little bit crazy, but I kind of like that thick look. So how do we get those to get to this point? It's really simple. All I have to do is go into my original network and add a merge node. And then I have to go into this um, merge section and drag my target into that child node. And just like that, as my points approach, just so we can see this, as my points approach this, uh, you know, the location and proximity to my star, I can turn down the value of my random strength. And those guys are going to fly out to uh, their target. So. I could keyframe this, but that's even though that's random, it sort of acts on the entire network as a whole. And I want a little more control than I've got there. So I'm going to right mouse button click in this fall off object section and create a fall off object. You can see that I get this um, node, this little sort of uh, looks like a sphere hanging out right in the center here. And as I move that away from it, all of those points, as they come into proximity with this 
uh, falloff object start spreading themselves out according to the points on my secondary network. So that's kind of cool, except what happens is it works in reverse. So I want to change the falloff object and click on this invert falloff. And just like that, as those points come into contact with that falloff object, they're going to start being attracted to my star. Now in this case I actually want them to encompass all of those. So let's kind of get them into position so that they look pretty good. Let's increase our inner zone. And just like that, as they come into play, they get blasted sort of out to that second uh, secondary object. And that is really cool. I like that. And it also gets rid of, actually in this case, do we get, uh, yeah, we get rid of all of that um, rotational value that we had on that random object too that we added. So just to add this one last little bit, I want to go to my curve tools. This is kind of fun. We'll just go to the curve tools and I'm going to go to my curl tool and take this curve and just apply some curl to it so that there's a little bit more dynamic animation or a little bit more of a some variance to the points as they come into the camera and into the scene and then they sort of hit that star point and then get that guy gets blasted out so that is just kind of a fun cool way of taking some chaotic motion and we can even hide that uh, hide that repro mesh for that second animation so now they just sort of come into a particular point and they get scattered about and that is a look at the merge node and taking some chaos and adding some order to it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching.